Um, I think I did initially. I did see that a lot. So we would we would wait around, right? We, we, we wait around for the phone calls not to come, and then they yeah. would call us, right? Yeah, Eventually, because yeah, yeah. they're like, because hey. you you would talk to guys, and they would say, yeah. "I'm waiting on this or that," and you yeah. know the truth because yeah. you say to yourself, "Okay, well, if you're not, you don't have a spot already. The best you're going to get is a walk-on position, yeah. and yeah. you're probably not going to make it, right?" Yeah. So, I think what's happening now is there aren't as, in my opinion, anyway. I don't I don't think it's as much anymore because it seems to me from the outside looking in that the mid-level to lower level division ones are really staking their claim and trying to make the name for themselves by going with international players. players absolutely. That's a great so point. That is a right? great so, point. Yeah. So I think what's happening is the kids who are borderline, which are the kids that at our level, we're trying to get those kids, right? Yeah. We're trying to get... We're trying to get, if you want to really be good, you got to get the squad guys yeah. that are D1 squad guys that are going to play for you. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because that's who, you know, yeah. you look at the NESCAC, right? They're loaded, they're loaded with, right? with those guys. Every single right. one of them so, is that, right? So, um, uh, you you know, you're, that's who you're trying to get. And I think there's it's happening more and more now that kids are looking at the roster and saying, I don't want to sit on the bench behind uh swen and you know and, and uh, jorgen i want to play yeah yeah right yeah. so i think we actually are getting to a point where kids are more they're more not necessarily realistic but they're they're looking at us and i think they're starting to come and and you you've done a lot of research and you see a lot of games the level of our soccer has really, gone, really up. gone up yeah yeah I it's mean, not are, it's not shabby it's not ugly ball no. anymore right like no, I mean yeah. the the level is good. It's a when people come to see it, and part of the problem is that they don't see it as yeah. much because we're not on TV, TV yep. right? And um, so, but the level when they go see it live, they immediately go, "Oh, you know." There was um a gentleman who coached basketball at University of Rochester, and he won a national championship there, and he has a great quote. And uh, I think his name was Mike Near or Coach Near, mm -hmm. I think. And his quote was. Everybody thinks they can play Division Three until there's a Division Four, <laughs> and it's true. Yeah. So, so yeah. you know, uh, but it's not. It's that's not true anymore, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Division Three athletics in every sport, yeah, oh, yeah, I, is is super competitive. Mm -hmm. the, the margins of the top uh, to get over the hump, everything has to go your way. Yeah. Uh, you know, because the teams, the level is so good. And, and not only that, you're getting a lot of kids, particularly, you know, particularly state schools, I think, yeah. benefit the most from kids who are transferring out of out. Division yeah. One and they go back yeah. to Division Three. Two, yeah. I, I, I will say, like, it's this whole journey that I've been on since the fall where I started watching these games. And I hadn't, I mean, I'd watched Mount Union, my alma mater, a number of times. Like, I'd follow. But it wasn't until this fall where I really started to look at teams. And the amount of games I watched was, I mean, legitimately crazy. But um, <clears throat> um, when it was all said and done, I'm like, wow, there is some really, I mean, legitimately good soccer it, when you look at collegiately. And and, and I, I've been saying for a while, it's like, I would, I would take even – the top 100, 150 Division three teams, and you compare them up against the lower end Division one teams, and there, there's going to be a game. It's not going to be this. It's not a walk in the park. It's not going to be. It, it would be a game. Right? The, right. Yeah. Uh, the, the difference would be um, the overall depth De of the yeah. D1 programs, yeah. right? Correct. And they would Correct. have one or two guys that it's we special. don't have. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and then, you know, uh, uh, the um, just just the, maybe the fact that they can train year round. It's round, yeah, so yeah. They're more physically fit, fit. a little yep. bigger. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we've played in the spring. We've played a couple of D one programs. You mm -hmm. know, typically they dominate us. Yeah. But we hang in there. The nature of the sport allows it to be competitive anyway, it, because yeah. it's hard to score. Yeah. So. If you can, if you can, if you're good defensively, defensively and yeah. just keep the ball a little bit. Yeah. If you can manage to maintain possession, then you can play against them. 
Yeah. And particularly what I've found is in some of those games, when we've done a couple of spring games, when they, you know, you, they might have three or four guys. They take those three or four guys off, and now yeah. it's just their squad versus my yeah. first team. We're, we're as good as 